Hey everyone, it's Ivan with KitBadger.com, here to bring you a tip. Today we're talking about how to make steel targets, in particular small gongs, not suck to shoot. I really enjoy shooting steel. It's a lot of fun, that instant gratification, instant feedback when you hit it. And additionally, steel targets, especially gongs, can get pretty inexpensive. This one, Tactical Scorpion Gear, six inch gong, 15 bucks shipped to my door. Pretty sweet deal. The problem is with this, as well as smaller and even some of the bigger gongs, is they move a lot when you shoot them. So traditionally, you'll throw some carriage bolts in there, you'll have some chain hanging from some sort of beam or tree, whatever it may be. And when you hit this thing, it ends up moving and it moves a lot. And you can have things like it'll end up twisting depending on how long the chain is, or seen it where at range, hit it with a rifle, thing will go up on top of your basically crossbar for your target stand. No one wants to walk down there and fix that. Like, I set it out there at 100 yards because I want to shoot it, not because I want to walk back and forth. But it does move a lot. So how do we address the issue of our gongs moving a lot so that we can get faster follow-up shots? So the solution I found was to find a semi-rigid material to mount this to, to where it's still going to allow flex. Don't want this stuff coming back at me being really rigid, but at the same time, bring itself back into a position where I can shoot it again a lot quicker than if it's bouncing around on chain or something like that. The material I found, if it worked really good, is a sweet ass mud flap. Now you can also use stuff like horse stall matting, issue being though, kind of expensive and it comes in like a four foot by six foot sheet. Don't need that much of it. And additionally, you can get mud flaps for free. You just go to a truck stop with a couple of crescent wrenches. You can just undo these bolts and they pull straight out. Just don't get caught. Or if you're lucky, you just pull off on the side of the road to take a leak and you're like, oh, sweet, a mud flap. So the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and mark where my holes are gonna be drilled to drop my carriage bolts through and attach this thing. And as you can see, I have space off to this side and Leave some more space over on this side. It doesn't really matter. If your rounds end up hitting this, they're gonna punch right through it. And you don't wanna try and make this like super close here because what'll end up happening is this is a weak point and this material is way weaker than steel. So as this gets torn up, even though we're gonna put a washer behind it, if you make it really close right there, it's gonna rip through and then your target's gonna swing and you don't want that. So after having marked my mat with my steel gong, I'm gonna go ahead and take a drill, have this thing hopefully not follow me, and go ahead and drill these holes out. So I've gone ahead and drilled out the holes where I need them, and then I've marked where I wanna cut this thing out. So now I just have to break out my handy handsaw and cut this thing out. You can use a power saw, but I don't have any outlets out here, so going old school. Now that we got our piece cut out and our holes drilled, I'm just gonna go ahead and line this guy up, grab a carriage bolt, throw it through there. It's a mud flap, it's not adamantium. It's gonna end up, gonna end up wearing out eventually. Um, one way to help keep it from wearing out as fast is make sure you throw a washer on there. So I'm gonna do that. And then it's a matter of kind of whatever you want to do. You can throw some nylock nuts on there, or if you want, you can just use regular nuts, and if you want to lock it down, throw a second one on behind it, lock them with a couple crescent wrenches, however you want to do that. Get this thing mounted on here so that we can do some shooting. So I've got this thing mounted on there now, two carriage bolts, and as you can see, you got the washer, just keep cranking this thing down until it sucks these washers down onto the mud flaps, get it nice and tight. And I have these double locked on there because I don't have any nylock. Now we're just gonna mount this thing up on our target stand, however we wanna do it, and put some rounds on this. You can see I've got the target mounted now onto this target stand. I've used carriage bolts because I like to take all this stuff apart and move it. Target stand moves a little bit, it's portable, it's not super heavy duty. It's fine, I shoot in different ranges. But take note that one, this is mounted behind this wood and also you have probably about, I don't know, four, maybe six man inches of material right here. And what that is allowing is movement right here. 
We want this, when rounds come in, to still be able to move, absorb that, we don't want to create something rigid here. Not what we're doing. If this stays vertical, stuff will come back, it will hurt you. We want this to move. This is allowing that. What we're doing is reducing the amount of time it takes for this to come back into position so we can take a second shot, rather than having it bounce all over the place because it's hanging on some chain. So, having this set up now, we're gonna go ahead and take some shots on it. Anytime you're shooting steel, make sure you have your safe standoff, generally about 10 yards for pistol and about 100 yards for rifle. So, let's put some rounds on it. As you can see, using this uh, semi-rigid material, this mud flap, does a really good job of bringing small steel gongs back into place for those faster follow-up shots and still be safe at the same time. And if you're wondering about those little guys, don't worry about those little guys. It just shows I'm not a ninja and I'm way too lazy to cut out another mud flap and remount this thing to pretend I didn't do that. So we're all on a journey. If you get too fast, slow down. Once you get it over and over, speed up. Find that happy medium, progress on your journey. At any rate, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.